Hello everybody, my name is Alex and welcome to a video where we're going to discuss the Hermetic Order, one of the new secret societies that was recently added to Civ 6. Now, a few weeks ago, unfortunately, I've been kind of missing from YouTube for the first time in a year, but a few weeks ago we looked at the Owls of Minerva, I really liked that secret society, we broke down their bonuses. Today we're basically doing the same, we're going to break down all of the bonuses for this secret society, talk about just how good I think they are, or how average maybe in some cases I think they are, and then we'll end the video by giving some nice tips that will hopefully help you along the way to decide how you should play with this secret society. And before we jump in, I want to just say thank you to Arthur who suggested I play as Robert the Bruce, because when prepping for this video, I played a full game as Robert the Bruce and the secret society, and it was very useful. So the initiation bonus, and to basically achieve this and unlock this, all you have to do is discover a natural wonder, and it's 100% guaranteed that if you discover a natural wonder, then you should discover this secret society. Now before we actually dive into what this is, the initiation bonus, does anybody else find the joining a secret society thing weird? Because, it, I don't know, it just doesn't seem to work properly. Like, I could join one secret society, but then I'll still be getting offers from other ones, and it's really confusing. Like, maybe they could patch it so that once you've joined a secret society, you don't get any messages from the other ones, because it just gets a bit annoying, but I don't know, maybe that's just me. But anyway, the initiation bonus for the Hermetic Order is that it reveals the Ley Lines resource on the map. And Ley Lines give a standard adjacency bonus to all specialty districts of what I think is plus one. So, now obviously this isn't the worst bonus in the world, because bottom line, it will increase your yields. I mean, if you, you put it next to, you put some districts around it, you're going to get plus one. So, you know, I can't complain, it's not the worst thing in the world, but... What I do have to say is that it's just not really that powerful in my opinion. If you do a lot of city planning anyway, I mean, as I play more and more of the game, I, I do lots of city planning. Every time I see a mountain or some mountains, you know, I'm always thinking campers. If I see rivers um, close to the sea, I'm thinking harbors, commercial hubs, getting them next to each other. So most people do city planning. So if you do your city planning, you're going to get adjacency bonuses anyway and... Ley lines can get in the way a little bit. They can sort of, you know, you just think, oh, I wish it wasn't there. But overall, I think it, it is a benefit and it definitely is sort of beneficial to have ley lines. It's just that at the very start, just for the plus one adjacency bonus to districts, I don't think it's very powerful. But it does get better later on in the game. So moving on to the ritual bonus, now this is unlocked by reaching the medieval era, so all you've got to do is get there, and what it does, it allows you to construct the alchemical society, which is a replacement for the university. So what the alchemical society does is it offers literally everything the university does, it gives the bonus science, the housing, the citizen slot, and the great scientist point per turn, but it's stronger than the university in that it gives an additional two production as well as plus one great engineer and plus one great merchant point per turn and finally gold equal to the science adjacency bonus of the district. So I thought, you know, I'll break down those little bonuses now from um, what it gets in addition to the university. So the plus two production in a city is all right. I mean, plus two production, it's not really game changing. But when you think that, well, well, production is at the absolute basic of everything you do in Civ 6, I'd rather have the two production than not have it. So, you know, it also stacks across the game, you know, plus two production per turn. If you have that for 30 turns, that's 60 production more than you would have had. So it's not something um, we should really be turning our nose up at turning our noses up at, there we go, if I can speak. So it, it's good, it's not that powerful, but it, it's good. The next thing is the extra great people points. Now this, this is really my personal highlight here, because what I've tried to do when I've played with the Hermetic Order is get campuses out in pretty much every single one of my cities. So then if you're getting these alchemical societies out in every one of your cities as well, this is a good batch of great people points, and it's going to allow you to recruit far more great people than you ordinarily would do. So again, I'm, I'm pretty happy about this. I think it's definitely my highlight. And the final bit, the extra gold, so the gold equal to the science adjacency bonus. It's nice. It's not game changing, but you'll never kind of be like, no, don't give me that extra gold. You're going to want the gold. So overall, I'm pretty positive about the alchemical society. It's arguably my favorite bit about the whole order. Um, so yeah, it's, it's pretty good. 
So the indoctrination bonus is unlocked by reaching the industrial era. Now what this does is for every great person earned, ley lines receive plus one yield equal to that great person type. So basically if you earn a great merchant for example, the yield of the ley line tile will go up by plus one gold and that's for every single ley line tile in your territory. Um, and as a quick note, great admirals and great generals give plus one science because obviously you probably can't give plus one combat strength for a tile. I mean, you could, but it'd be a bit pointless. So they give plus one science. So it's going to allow you to generate um, quite a bit of science. Now, from the game I played, it seemed that this bonus backdated to include great people from across your game. So even before you unlock this bonus. So that's just something worth bearing in mind. And do let me know if you found the same thing in your game. So how strong is this? Well, I think that depends largely on two th things. So firstly, just how good is your civilization at generating great people of all different types? If, like I did, you put a lot of time into building up districts, especially like campuses and the alchemical societies just because of the sheer amount of great people points they give, then you're going to recruit a lot of great people. And if you do that, your ley line tiles are going to give off some really nice shield bonuses and obviously be some of the strongest tiles in the game. I think that at one point I was generating like 14 signs per ley line tile, which was pretty cool. But what I would say on that is I was playing on King just to kind of maximize how strong this um, secret society could be. So if you're playing on higher difficulties, obviously you're not going to be getting 14 signs per turn from these tiles because you're not going to be recruiting 14 great scientists or great admirals or great generals um, more than likely. So it's probably going to be a little more dumbed down than that. I only had six sieves in my game as well, so it was pretty easy to sweep up the majority of the great people because I was kind of just whooping all their asses and there wasn't that much competition. The second factor here is how many ley line tiles do you have within your territory? So, you know, you could have really cool yields, but if you only have a couple of ley line tiles within your territory, it's just not going to be as strong, is it? You know, you want as many ley line tiles as possible. In my game, I think I had about just under one per city, maybe two per every three cities. So I was getting some pretty decent sign shields off all the tiles by the end, probably over 100 or around 100, something like that. So if, if you are unlocking lots of great people and you've got plenty of these tiles, it's going to work well. But if you have less ley line tiles, maybe you only have two or three, maybe you're just a bit unlucky, then um, obviously you're not going to get such great yields. Now, ultimately, my judgment on this bonus was it's good. Now, for me, it's definitely designed to be the the real selling point of the hermetic order because you know you, you're getting big bonus yields from tiles you're getting i don't know tiles with maybe three four production on four gold you know 10 science stuff like that maybe even bigger culture stuff like that as well so it's meant to be a really good bonus to give you some really cool tiles and they are. Like I said, the tiles I had were giving me some some probably better than average yields um, than what you'll get on higher difficulties, but I don't know. It's just like, if you are getting so many great people points, your yields from cities are going to be good anyway. You're going to be making a lot of science anyway, a lot of culture anyway, a lot of gold anyway, so... It just feels like a little boost. Now, it's a nice boost, but ultimately, it's a boost you could probably do without. And when I compare it to how much and how enthusiastic I was about the Isles of Minerva, I'm just not that enthusiastic about this one. Um, so, although, yeah, good, great tile yields from some for some tiles, I do think I'm just not that buzzing about it sort of thing. Moving on with this sort of tone of a little bit disappointed um, is the master plan and this is unlocked by reaching the atomic era. So basically what happens is you unlock the city project of occult research and basically um, what you need is a campus in your city and then you can do this. It will give you gold while it's active and then it will also grant great people points and, great, and science for every ley line tile in the city. It's good, like it's a nice... It, it's a nice project, and if you could have it earlier on in the game, it would be stupidly good. But I think when you get to the Atomic Era, if you're going to win a science victory, I think maybe you're going to win it anyway. If you're going to... You've probably already got a lot of great people, a lot of great works from, from great musicians, great writers, etc. So 
like on paper it's quite strong but i don't know it just depends where you are in your game doesn't it if 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 it's still all to play for this is going to be really useful if you've already won or somebody else has pretty much already won I don't know. It's a bit of an ace card, but I don't know how useful it's going to be. I don't know if it's going to be able to change your game round or whatever, so... It's okay. And I think that's a good summary for this Secret Society. Nice bonuses that are okay. They just don't get me crazy excited. So now I've dampened down all your spirits, it's time for some tips. Because although I may be kind of, you know, a bit cynical about this Secret Society, I do think it's still fun to play as, and there's definitely ways to enhance your experience and make it even more powerful. So, the biggest tip, the best way to play as a member of the Hermetic Order is to focus on great people and aim for something like a science victory. I got a science victory with Robert the Bruce, it felt pretty good, and the Secret Society did actually help me get there. So the kind of things I'm suggesting you do is build plenty of wonders to improve your great people points per turn and keep your civilization happy and growing. Now for Scotland obviously this is more important than for your average civ because Scotland is a big um, big civ, a, a really good civ when its citizens are happy or ecstatic. But just in general, if you're playing with this order, what you want is as many districts as possible. So if you're going to get a lot of districts, you want to keep your cities growing, and so you don't face rebellions, you want to keep them happy. So anything sort of on growth and amenities, I think is good for any civilization playing as um, the Hermetic Order, because you just want as many districts as possible. Now, especially with Scotland, some tips, because I would recommend trying out this secret society with Scotland Build entertainment complexes, build wonders like the Colosseum because they gave amenities, and keep wars to a minimum. And the Hermetic Order Scotland combination will be fun to play as, and it will probably, if you know what you're doing on that difficulty, lead you to victory. Now, there are a couple of other civs I want to um, kind of give a, a couple of shout outs to. So, Sweden. For Sweden, you can probably use the Hermetic Order to help you get a diplomatic victory because Sweden already gets bonus science and engineer points from universities and factories. And the key bit for getting a diplomatic victory with Sweden and the Hermetic Order is that great people recruited give 50 diplomatic favour. So diplomatic favour, a big part of getting a diplomatic victory. So again, you know, Sweden, Hermetic Order, go for the diplomatic victory. And the final save I want to mention, and I'm sure there are plenty of others, which I would really encourage you, let me know in the comments which ones you'd play as with this secret society. Um, but the final one I want to mention is Brazil, because Brazil, courtesy of the Carnival Project and the easy access to good district locations, you know, they get all them rainforest bonuses. Generally, Brazil has a good flow of great people, and if you think about it, you know, Brazil is um, great people focused, the Hermetic Order gets good bonuses for great people, they kind of go hand in hand, so that will definitely help you in whatever direction you wanted to take Brazil in. And the final tip I have for you, well, I have sort of two more. So one of them is from the Ancient History of Viewer um, that comments a lot. So thank you for this. And they said, set the start position to legendary so you, that you can have a larger chance of starting near a wonder. It would help. I mean, it's not something I'd probably do because I don't like fixing my start position to be that amazing. But obviously, if it did that, it would help. And the second thing, with any of these secret societies... Think about your government policy slots, you know, you can use them to keep people happy, generate even more great people points, stuff like that. Just just think about where you can kind of generate these great people points. Always be thinking, and I think you will have fun with this secret society. So to conclude, the Hermetic Order is very much a secret society which I think is good if you're going for something like a cultural victory or a science victory or even a diplomatic victory. How strong it is compared to the other secret societies? Not really. I prefer the Owls of Minerva, to be honest. I just had more fun playing as them. I thought they had better bonuses, like the wildcard policy slots and stuff. So, yeah. Give it a try. Let me know what you think in the comments. And, yeah, I will see you in another video soon. Thank you so much for watching this video today. If you want to check out my review of the Isles of Minerva, then check out the video in the box below. Also, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the next two Secret Societies breakdown, which will be coming very soon. Make sure you hit the like button on this video and share it with a friend. Thank you for watching. My name is Alex, and I will see you in another video soon.